hack into cybersecurity? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. Good Monday morning. Today is April 24th. And if you're seeing this ugly mug, then you know Dr. Gerald Osher has been preoccupied with another uh, personal adventure that he is unable to greet all of you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning. So, um, unfortunately, you'll have to stick with me just one more day potentially, but good morning. Welcome to the show. Again, today is April 24, 2023, and it is episode 351 of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, the show that's going to help break down all the latest cyber threats and how you can incorporate this information into your cybersecurity practices. But before we dig into uh, the show, I'd love to share the stream sponsors with you today. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Panopsi. You guys, if you've been around for a while, you kind of know Panop a little bit about Panopsi, but I want to I want to tell you from my perspective a little bit. They are all about quantified risk assessment. Now, what is quantified risk assessment, Eric? Well, this, it really is a hard topic to discuss, right? So, you know, you're in this, you're in the CISO, you're the cybersecurity guy or gal at the organization. And you're like, Hey, we really need to fix this, right? All the stuff that we're talking about, right? We need to fix this. Well, the C-suite's like, eh, we're going to YOLO it, whatever, you know, having somebody like Panopsi security backing you up and like, yeah, well, this thing right here that was just talked about, this has a dollar, a quantified dollar amount risk associated with that of not patching or not updating or whatever this is around the business. When I tell you, I can't tell you how many times we are on a DFIR case and everything that a business owner has put off because they didn't see the value in closing X, Y, or Z vulnerability and now they got popped for ransomware, insider threat, uh, data exfiltration, whatever the case, all of a sudden that business has money to fix that. So get, you know, I know this is a little detrimental to Barricade Cyber, but get with Panopsi Security, right? Because then you can actually sh help show the business owner, the C-suite, what is going on and what is a real dollar amount for not fixing this thing i love the good mornings everybody um we will do a little bit of job jacking dfir case it is digital forensics and incident response uh there jasmine Sif, uh, smith uh, let me tell you about the other uh sponsor one of the other sponsors of the show it is xm cyber look organizations are overwhelmed with tens of thousands of exposures across the cloud on-premise environments on a monthly basis you know if you watching this show you're seeing new cves are being uh, discussed and talked about and disclosed and things of that nature right so trying to reduce your cyber risk is almost an impossible task without a dedicated team behind you discover the most critical threats and practical tips on how to overcome remediation fatigue with a new approach to efficiently reduce the risk with XM Cyber's 2023 State of Exposure Management Report. That link is down in the chat. You know, going with, you know, get, getting XM Cyber to help find the vulnerabilities using Panopsi to help show the impact will help you not use a company like Barricade, All right? So good morning to everybody out if you are joining this please say hi hashtag team live um i love that you know everybody was doing the team replay and because of all of you we now have team live that's actually in uh in full effect 
So if you are on Team Replay, hello into the future. How are you doing? Um, do the hashtag Team Replay when you are catching up on this. If you're Team Hybrid, you know, you're watching at 2x, 3x speed, trying to get caught up with my ADHD ramblings. Um, welcome to the show. And look, if you're really like me, you are a passive observer. You sit in the background. You just kind of watch and, you know, whatever. Just say hi. I'm passive observer. I'm over here working on this thing, but I'm listening, right? I'm listening. Um, but I, I got this other stuff I got to focus on as well, right? Um, if you're like me, you listen to music and stuff like that when you're when you're uh, your head's down and focused on some work and stuff like that. So um, with that, let's get on with the show this morning. I hope everybody is doing well. We do have some interesting topics today. So um, let me know if y'all want a few minutes of jaw jacking at the end. Uh, just do like hashtag jaw jacking at the mid roll, mid roll when I'm actually paying attention. Um, do hashtag jaw jacking and I'll stick around for a few minutes, but only if you ladies and gentlemen want it. With that, let's fire it up. Oh, this thing worked so I tested this thing six times. Uh, all right, we're going to go to old true blue. Hold on. Let's launch that sketchy VNC player or VLC, uh, VLC player. Hold on. This is crazy. There's something with the website being shared in restream. There's some sort of compatibility issue. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what it is, but it's driving me nuts. But anyway, here we go. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Monday, April 24th, 2023. Energy sector organizations in U.S. and Europe hit by the same supply chain attack as 3CX. On Friday, researchers from cybersecurity firm Symantec revealed that trojanized software from the financial services company Trading Technologies impacted two additional organizations in the energy sector, as well as two other organizations involved in financial trading. The researchers did not reveal how exactly the organizations were infected, nor did they reveal the names of the victim organizations, but said the infection chain started with a corrupted version of the ex-trader installer, which was digitally signed by the company and made to look benign. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, when we've seen this come out, what was it, two weeks ago, maybe three now? Um you know, that 3CX had a, you know, a vulnerability that was pushed out through its updates on the de uh, desktop application. You know, everybody in the InfoSec, you know, I mean, it just common sense, really, that, you know, if you take a look at 3CX's um, organization, you know, on their website, they've got multiple countries listed there. Um, so this was going to be a global impact, right? So, you know, we're going to see more and more stories about this. Um, you know, I did learn if you follow, if you were on the show last week, I was talking about this X trader software. Um, but it looked, so I did find out more about this a little bit. I thought originally, you know, uh, inappropriately that it may have been like, um, a torrented version or a cracked version of this software, but talking with some other folks in the space, Come to find out, XTrader software was actually end of life to uh, back in like 2021 or 2022. Um, somebody else picked up that XTrader software domain and was starting to push out potential updates um, that was malicious from what it appears to be. So essentially, company goes out of business, some way domain squats it, buys up that domain. And then starts pushing out malicious code to everybody who has that X trader software. Um, so, and they have listed this thing as an actual 3CX employee, not as a subcontractor, which is one of the other speculations that I really had with just like what we've seen with LastPass. It was, um, I don't know if that's been identified yet, if it was an actual LastPass employee or if it was a, uh, subcontractor type of coder type of thing in the last pass. So, you know, this is why you got to have asset management 
right? Knowing what software is installed on your environments, is it an allowed software, things of that nature. These are very, very critical things um, to know to help secure your organization, right? Um, anybody who's an InfoSec knows team, uh, team view, like we said last week, team viewers got some, some of its problems. You know, we have security concerns, um, but, you know, definitely any desk, simply help, you know, all these other well-known applications that are used heavily by threat actors, you know, start with that low lying fruit going through, seeing what's in your organization, get a tool that can help you assess these things. Right. So know what's in your organization ladies and gentlemen and start auditing start filtering it um you know your firewall if you have application control in your firewalls that could be a very good nugget of information to help you understand what's potentially communicating out um so because not all applications have a add and remove button so uh, definitely look at your firewalls as well for some of those type of things right Session cookie stolen by info sticks from his BYR. Oh, thank you, Brandon Parsons. Yep. See, even when you're in this industry, you rely on other folks that are in the know, like Brandon Parsons, that's dropping that knowledge in the chat. Thank you so much for that. It's hard to keep up with so much of uh, these things that are going on. Um, I'm not sure what Jasmine Stith is going on about bug fix. Um, I'll try to catch up on whatever the world that is. CISA adds three actively exploited flaws to the KEV catalog, including the critical paper cut bug. The three vulnerabilities added to the known exploited vulnerabilities catalog are the min IO information disclosure vulnerability, the paper cut improper access control vulnerability, and Google Chrome's SCIA integer overflow vulnerability. The critical remote code execution bug affecting paper cut print management software allows remote attackers to bypass authentication and run arbitrary code. According to an update shared by the company, Melbourne-based Papercut, evidence of active exploitation of unpatched servers emerged in the wild around April 18th of this year. Yeah, Papercut. We I started seeing Papercut stuff getting released and talked about late last week, and we started communicating with our clients that are either implementing it or already have implemented paper cut. Um, those who don't know paper cut is like a, uh, a print server, third, a third party print server application. Um, you know, it's, I don't have any positive or negative feelings about that. Right. Um, but you know, these are definitely CVEs, you know, go into your, Risk management and find out what's going on, you know, find out, you know, are the CVEs vulnerable or if your organization is vulnerable to these CVEs, then we'll, uh, you may want to do some proper mitigations and things of that nature. Right. Um, that's a nasty cut to have paper cut. That's right. Carrie, there's your dad joke of the day. How you like that one? Nasty cut to have a paper cut. Hyena code poised to devour GPT-4. In a paper published in March, AI scientists at Stanford University and Canada's Mila Institute for AI proposed a technology that could be far more efficient than GPT-4 or anything like it at gobbling vast amounts of data and transforming it into an answer. Known as Hyena, the technology is available to achieve equivalent accuracy on benchmark tests such as question answering while using a fraction of the computing power. In some instances, the hyena code is able to handle amounts of text that make GPT-style technology simply run out of memory and fail. Its primary achievement is to move beyond Google's transformer architecture to a sub-quadratic approach, which, like its namesake, the hyena, promises to be much better at hunting down the right answers. Yeah, so those who don't know, until recently, you know, don't feel bad. I didn't know either, but, you know, GPT-4 is the underlying code that runs uh, the open API chat GDP, GPT. Um, so GPT-4 is the latest version of that. Um, and it looks like we have some other people that are uh, some other vendors that are coming into the space as hyena. We see in true, uh, 
true GPT that Elon Musk is touting. We've seen like three or four other ones that are trying to get into the mix and do their their AI um, equivalent of OpenAI's Chat GDP or GPT. I always get tongue tied on that. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's, it's honestly not something I'm trying to make fun of. Is literally getting tongue tied every time I say it. Um, yeah, so hopefully with the less computing power that's being required, that's being touted in here, um, you know, it's been discussed that OpenAI's chat GPT requires almost a mining rig to really, really be able to get a bunch of or get things done in an efficient manner. So it's very uh, GPU intensive, the graphic card intensive. Um, so having a newer one come out that requires less resources may be able to be more adoptable inside of organizations. So that way, if you have custom coders, um, you know, trying to get code produced quicker, you know, maybe a more um, advantageous resource be able to do that. So, um, you know, as anything gets created, more and more people get into any sort of industry and hopefully make things better. So keep an eye on it. Let's see. You know, what comes out of this, all this, right? Military helicopter crash blamed on failure to apply software patch. The helicopter in question is an MRH-90 Taipan operated by the Australian Army and was engaged in what has been described as a routine counter-terrorism training activity on March 23rd when it ditched just off a beach in the state of New South Wales. All 10 Australian Defence Force personnel aboard the helicopter were accounted for, with two experiencing, quote, minor injuries, end quote. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation reported the likely cause of the incident was failure to apply a software patch, quoting unnamed Army personnel who reported that the patch preventing hot starts had been available for years but had not been applied to all of the Australian Army's Taipans. Uh, <laughs> um, how to keep this PG 13 Alex. Yeah. Drop bail failure. Exactly. Um, so all right. Keep it PG 13, Eric. Um, when you talk, when you're in certain industries, military, for example, hospital, uh, hospital, um, almost said hospitality, but not, but when you're in hospital scenarios, things of that nature, you know, the patching has real world effects, real, seriously in this situation or in this situation, life and death effects. Now, does this apply to everybody? No. Right. But you get the point. I mean, there's, Depending on what specter you're in um, or what space you're in, it's I don't know, it's really you really got to apply your your stuff, right? So, all right, with that, let's get on with the mid roll, ladies and gentlemen. And again, if you want to do jaw jacking, um, then you know. This will be the time, and then I'll see it, and we'll do job jacking afterwards. And now, a word from our sponsor, Tynes. Ask anyone at RSA. Security teams can't operate in a silo. No SOAR solutions enable users to dynamically collect information outside their systems and use it at multiple points in an automated workflow. But Tynes does. With Tynes, users can exchange real-time information outside its platform and use it to drive automated workflows. Visit Tynes.com slash build to learn more. That's T-I-N-E-S dot com slash B-U-I-L-D. Ghost. All right, all right, all right. So once again, you know, we are Barricade Cyber. I'm Eric with them, but, you know, Thanks for Panopsi and XM Cyber helping to keep Simply Cyber up and running. You know, if you are new to the show, but you've been around for a while, let's definitely talk about the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. We always like to take a few moments during the mid-roll and mention the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Last Friday, Marcus Granny, 
Granai. Sorry, Marcus, if I'm butchering your name, I'm sure I am. But last week, he was tagged on Friday to do the Simply Cyber um, community challenge. He put the hashtag in there. Um, and we also we see people like Jesse Johnson coming out, you know, saying he's proud of him, you know, always being a resource. And this is exactly what this is for. Right. So, Marcus, if you're in the chat, please say hi and get ready to tag or start thinking about who you want to tag. Go ahead and tag them, you know, to be the next super uh, simply cyber community challenge, building this community of like minded folks on LinkedIn, staying up to date with other people of like minds. And you just never know who's going to actually, you know, be you know, a mentor or you know, a follower or be able to keep giving you pieces of nuggets of information to help better your uh, yourself, right? So, uh, Marcus, I see you in there. Go ahead and tag somebody, and we will follow up at the end to make sure um, that the next person has accepted the challenge. Mods, if you can, keep me straight if you're here to uh, uh, make sure that that went through successfully. And we will carry on with the show, ladies and gentlemen. Token GCP flaw lets attackers backdoor Google accounts. Oh boy. Google has addressed a cloud platform GCP security vulnerability impacting all users and allowing hackers to backdoor their accounts using malicious OAuth applications installed from the Google Marketplace or third-party providers. Named Ghost Token by Asterix Security, this security flaw was addressed via a global patch that rolled out in early April. After being authorized and linked to an OAuth token that gives it access to the Google account, malicious apps could be made invisible by attackers after exploiting this vulnerability. Asterix Security said, quote, Since this is the only place Google users can see their applications and revoke their access, the exploit makes a malicious app unremovable from the Google account. Yeah, so those who are just being introduced to me, you know, we are a digital forensics incident response for I run a digital forensics incident response firm. Um, and toward the beginning of the year, we went through the SANS, or I went through the SANS cloud um, incident response, which talked about Azure, um, uh, AWS, um, I forget the Alibaba and you know gcp cloud or uh, gcp by google and i had to tell you you know doing the forensics on a gcp tenant is i'm i just want to go play in traffic it is it's one of the worst for a forensic standpoint and the more and more i hear people using it, it seems like it is you know a really really bad platform to get stuff done in you know it's really great for websites from what i hear um, you know, if you're just trying to stand up an independent resource, a container or whatever, but real architecture behind the scenes and things of that nature, trying to build out that infrastructure inside of GCP. Again, this is third party. We don't really use GCP. Um, William, remind me of that and I'll get you that course number. Um, but the, you know, trying to build in multiple layers and build out network infrastructure and things of that nature in GCP, I am told that it is really, really painful. And like I said, at least from the forensic side, the artifacts that we're able to gather out of GCP is really, really minimal. Um, so I, I really cringe anytime so, somebody says that we think we have data loss um, inside of a GCP tenant. I just cringe. I'm like, all right. Well, you got to know that there's some limitations with what we could be able to do. And this kind of just shows that, right? So a malicious actor, uh, cyber criminal, whatever you want to call them, you know, can stand up a application inside of GCP and your normal users, your admins are not going to see it unless they went to certain areas to do things. Uh, you know, Microsoft even has a problem with this where if you want to get certain things done inside of the Azure tenant, you know, some things are only available by PowerShell, right? So but at least Microsoft has more logging than GCP. So even things that are being executed, executed from PowerShell, it's definitely, Hey, look, there's even a picture. Gerald, Dr. Gerald Ozier would be very happy. 
Here's a picture. And it even looks like Pac-Man. Y'all see that? Let me blow that up a little bit. Looks like we're doing Pac-Man. Go away, bleeping computer. I really don't like bleeping computer's website. But anyway, it looks like Pac-Man to me. But anyway, we shall carry on, ladies and gentlemen. End quote. Biden administration wants to avoid 5G mistakes in race to beat China on 6G. Oh boy. The United States is aiming to shape the development of 6G telecom technology at an early stage of research and development and avoid letting China build up an early lead in next generation telecommunications. This according to Anne Neuberger, the Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology. She said, quote, we want to take the list of lessons we've learned from 5G about the importance of early involvement and resilience. And uh, if y'all seen, I got the dolphins. Uh, all right. This is such a effing train wreck. The government, this is going, I promise not to get too political, but this is going to get a little political. We have the federal government who can't implement CMC, CMMC, the cybersecurity framework for the D, for the <laughs> DOD. So they downplayed it for, to be in this 800 They can't freaking roll out anything cybersecurity related and keep it. And they're like, oh, we want to make sure we avoid the 5G mistakes. Y'all can't get standard MFA put in for the DOD, the DOJ, and any of these other things, and you got to keep rolling it back. You know, and I'm not saying this is Biden by any means. You know, we've had many, many problems with many, many administrations around cybersecurity. So this is not just a slam on Biden; it is a slam on implementation of cybersecurity by the federal government, right? And I mean. Why are we racing for 6G when we're not even fully, unless you believe T-Mobile and, you know, they've got 100% 5G coverage all across the globe. You know, I guess technically they do now. They got, uh, well, they're working on it anyway with their partnership with Starlink with Elon Musk. Um, so it will fail over to Star uh like if you're going hiking in the mountains, if you don't know, and you're on T-Mobile, apparently they have um, a partnership that, you know, if you're hiking in the mountains, you fall outside of cellular signal and there's a Starlink satellite above you, you can do SOS messaging and, you know, send out alerts through the Starlink network. So, um, you know, so you, you don't get stranded on the mountains or hiking or whatever so that's that's kind of cool you know because we've we've had problems with hikers going missing in the past and unfortunate things right but um you know that's that's kind of a failover if you will right um so you know you don't have cell service you will fail over to starlink if you're on t-mobile um at least that's what i heard i haven't heard of that's been fully implemented or any of that stuff. So if you're on T-Mobile, let me know in the chat, you know, so that way I can get educated on that one. I do know they came out with that toward the end of last year, Q3 or Q4 of last year. Um, so there was a huge partnership, but I, I really want the government to slow down just a tad and be like, let's fix what we have now before racing off and doing a new squirrel event i mean i don't i don't get it i don't get it at all except for driving me just driving me nuts uh, here we go quote cisco and vmware release security updates to patch critical flaws 
The most severe of the vulnerabilities is a command injection flaw in Cisco Industrial Network Director, CVE 2023-20036, with a score of 9.9, which resides in the web UI component and arises as a result of improper input validation when uploading a device pack. VMware, in an advisory released on April 20th, warned of a critical deserialization flaw impacting multiple versions of ARIA operations for logs, CVE 2023-20864, with a score of 9.8. And yeah, this is bad. A success as well can be, could allow an attacker to execute arbitrary commands as NT authority system. All right, we're going to go, we're going to move that. Those, if you're new to IT, network security, info security, NT authority slash system is like root. You have unfeathered access to a system. You don't need a password. You don't need anything. This is why a lot of, Info security people are really, really cautious when you start throwing in new tools like RMM tools that MSPs use and um, a lot of screen sharing like Screen Connect and some of these other tools that because they have unfeathered access, they can run com command as system inside of your organization's workstations that could cause real, real problems, right? So allowing yet another third party to get unauthorized you know if you if you put if you're installing you know your uh, msp is installing an rmm tool that is technically authorized right but if you have a threat actor inside of an organization that is using exploits to get unauthorized access like we didn't say this thing could do this right so it's bad that's bad that's bad um so if you have VMware, if you have Cisco Industrial uh, Network Director, um, I don't know how, how widespread that is. Uh, I would imagine that's in the Scandos network and um, things of that nature, right? So um, electrical grids, water facilities, things of that nature. Um, but more research even by me needs to be done just to verify because that I'm assuming we don't like in, in our own uh, security uh, that we're monitoring for our clients. This one hasn't this one doesn't sound familiar. So I don't think even us uh, you know, things that we're doing is impacted by this. But, you know, definitely go check. Right. That's what we're going to be doing. Now, last week in ransomware. Yay! Last week saw the discovery of LockBit testing macOS encryptors leading to an outage on NCR causing massive headaches for restaurants. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we saw the discovery by Malware Hunter team of a LockBit Apple Silicon encryptor, which is still quite buggy, but is being actively developed. Also last week were stories about ex-Conti members and Fin7 pushing a domino malware. Play ransomware using custom data theft and info stealing malware. Mm -hmm. Trigona targeting Microsoft SQL servers and UK personnel firm Capita confirming that data was stolen in its cyber attack. Remember, if you. Yeah, and that is it for them, it's for the CISO series. Yeah, the, I really. If anybody knows anybody at Bleeping Computer, can y'all send them a message? Be like, will y'all stop with these freaking ads? Drives me bonkers. Um, and every time you scroll, they're freaking. It's just. Uh. But anyway, um, yeah. Look, every week it's new ransomware, new this, new that, new data exfiltrations, and you know, this is why. You know, companies like us exist, right? It's it's really weird. Um, you know, the Process Explorer driver that's that's been around. You know, using Process Explorer has been used by threat actors for a long time, and you know, to systematically to kill processes that are not supposed to be processed or are supposed to be killed. Yeah, you know, that's another thing that you can do. That here's another nugget for a tip for you. 
Um, if you have do this, talk to your CISO and if you have a CISO or whatever, but two things that you can do, right? Um, this literally this week as you're going through, um, run, download process explorer from sys internals, execute it, see if you can kill your EDR tool, right? See if you can kill that freaking thing. If you're able to kill it, that's very, very bad. Your you need to talk to your EDR tool um, manu excuse me manufacturer and figure out how to prevent that. Right. Um, one other thing that you should do is you know see if you can dump LSAS uh, credentials. Right. Um, you know here let's since this is the end of the show uh, here we go we're gonna go into um, jaw jacket for a moment. I'm going to drop a little bit of nugget for you guys. Um, I'll actually, I'll show you, um, app.any.run just because it's really easy to spin up a VM and I'm going to minimize this cause I don't want to leak my credentials when I log into it. But I'm going to show you how to quickly dump LSAS that the threat actors literally do every single day. Just so you know, I do use a program, one website called app.any.run. You know, it's, I think the, um, I think the site is free. It's been a while since I've, um, you could use some free, a uh, free version of it anyway. We, we do have a commercial version that we use, um, but just for all this and to make sure I get fully logged in with tot just so i don't you know obsec myself at all right um and we'll share my screen again strummy 83 good job good job good job good job on uh completing your grc master course so this one we'll just we'll just tell it to go to google.com And again, I do know there was a comment about running malware and stuff like that, but you know, yeah, you you definitely need a paid version to do a lot of stuff with this application. Um, but so in here, come on. It is acting janky. Uh, you're not going to let me do it, are you? Yay, the demo gods hate me. <laughs> Still logged in. We'll try it one more time. We'll try it one more time. I really want to I really want to show you guys ladies and gentlemen how the threat actors really do this and how easy it really is. I can't run more than one task at one time. Oh, cuz this one's still running. All right, let me remove this. Hold on. Let's stop that. Just just talk amongst yourselves for a second. While I try to see if I can show you, ladies and gentlemen, this train wreck. I figured out a way some some behind the scenes going from here then to tat whatever and then I'll do task mgr dot exe this will bring up your task manager so even though the screen resolution is not doing 
you know, what I wanted to do. We'll make sure we add some more time. Um, so come in here to processes, show processes from all users. And you'll see a process here called LSAS. Now, if I just right click on this thing, create a dump file. This is going to create a dump file of all the credentials and everything that's inside of your organization or inside of your workstation that's currently impacted. And the threat hunter or threat actors are going to run that through Mimikatz, other tools, things of that nature. Um, so that way they can start uh, harvesting your credentials if that's one of the biggest things that they do. So if you are, um, so if you see these things, um, you should auto isolate, right? So it's, that's one thing to be looking out for is LSAS. Um, oh, the uh, GR, the other question was about the SANS cores. Um, Yep, 509, FOR 509. So this is the uh, this is one we I just passed not too long ago, the GAC Cloud Sort of uh, Forensics uh, Responder. So it does dive into the different, um, uh, like I said, Azure, AWS, Google Workspace, and GCP Incident Response. Um, we do the the instructor that we had was out of Amsterdam, so. Uh, one of my curl buddies um, that was uh, also in the class with me that um, so we actually went through and did the uh, oh crap the name forgets I'm escaping me of the other uh, starts with an A Alibaba cloud sorry Alibaba I knew if I just took a second um, it kind of goes, oh, Joseph, no, not a dozen tab. Yeah, it's called, you know, tabbing. So I've, I've got my, I got all my tabs here. So I got, I got tabs. <laughs> it's one of those things that I always do. Um, Eric Taylor, correct me if I'm wrong. Else how it could be found within the sim, correct? If Windows Explorers. Uh, yeah, Nathan Bolton, yes. Um, if you have your... Sim configured if you have law the proper logging, but to be honest with you, those that is something that should be detected by um, the uh, your EDR tool. I I honestly leverage the EDR tool for that to capture that LSAS the dumping of the LSAS, um, and we have rules in place on ours if we. So detect, if it's detected, it's automatically isolated because nobody in their right mind should be ever messing with LSS. And you know, if that's just an instant no-no, and we send you to network jail, if you will. Off topic, what headset are you using, Eric? Pretty cool. That Larry O. Um, I know it's a Corsair, uh, but I don't remember the actual model number. Uh, I actually got this one uh jenny a community challenge still needs a tag uh oh marcus are you still in the, in here did he did marcus tag anybody ladies and gentlemen i thought that i saw a tag i'm looking in mod chat i don't see anything it looks like um, Kimberly can fix it, had to take a flight, so she's not available to weigh in on her insight. Jason, good to see you. Have a great day, bud. He tried, but no one accepted. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we have a taker, Strumpy83. William Welch, it's, uh, it's the FOR509, FOR509. The SEC is for security, FOR is forensics. Marcus has now officially tagged Strumpy83. Strumpy83. 
and Strumpy says, beautiful. I accept. Look forward to seeing that. Again, if you are on LinkedIn, please, please, please look out for the Simply Cyber Community Challenge hashtag um, and connect with other people that are doing this, right? So um, we are getting to the top of the hour. I'll leave it open. If anybody has any last minute questions that I could be able to answer for a few moments of jaw jacking, I will be happy to do that. Take care, Brandon. Hope you do well. I will scroll back through the chat real quick, make sure I didn't. If there was an issue with the aircraft, Kimberly can fade. Ah, <laughs> that's right. She probably could. She seems very, very talented. Kumar, that's right. That's right. William, yes, I did. Uh, we do make indexes for all of our tests. Yes, sir. And if the next question is, will I share mine? No, unfortunately not. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's in there that is not allowed to be shared without proof of uh, taking the GX certification test. So. What kind of asset management is out there by Jasmine Stith? Um, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, again, there's there's uh, what MSPs use, which is called an RMM tool, which is a remote management and monitoring tool that can do it. Um, a lot of EDR or well, not a lot. Correct that. Some EDRs could do um, asset management. Um, there, there's a there's a number of tools out there that can help you do it. Um, the, some that are free, some that are paid. You just have to go through, unfortunately, through the Google hell and you know figure out a, a solution that's going to work for you and your organization. Just order my Flipper before they get banned anywhere. You know, Flipper is an interesting device it's a i call it a hobbyist device you know it's something to play around with and goof around with but i still prefer you know my proxmark 3 i prefer the the big boy tools just because that that flipper zero is has such small power on it it's not going to be able to do a whole lot um you got to get, <laughs> as I had to say, you got to get real intimate with your net, with your victim <laughs> for that flipper to work. So um, if you're getting that intimate, something else may be happening. But anyway, uh, question, how do you go about volunteering in the cyber field entry level? Kumar, just find. Um, mm, just find internships. To be honest with you, you could, depending on where you want to go, um, you, know, you could do like Red Canary, talk to them. Um, you know, I, I think CrowdStrike even has some. Um, there, there's a bunch of internships that are out there. Um, you just got to find what is, you know, in your field of cybersecurity, right? Just like saying if you're in IT, you know, are you a programmer? Are you a developer? Are you, you know, a network admin? Are you a system admin? Are you this? Are you that? You know, same thing with IT or with uh, info security. Are you, you know, DFIR? Are you for uh, malware analyst? Are you reverse engineering? Are you this? Are you that? So, um, lots of internships. I say that. Yep. Thoughts on working in the public sector? No, I, we're not. Uh, Look, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what my thoughts are, where you work at. Um, it's you got to you got to find a place that you feel comfortable with and that you can provide for your family at the end of the day. You know, as long as long as you're not, you know, harming other people. Right. So, 
you know, do, do go where you feel a calling. Don't listen to some knucklehead in South Carolina that, you know, give you employment advice on if you should go and work for the government or not. This is crazy. 174 y'all. Well, last questions, last questions. I worked in the government contractor for eight years. It's, it's, yep. Just like Alina said, you know, it's, um, you gotta, you gotta find your calling, right? So any last questions before we call it a day? I don't know if Dr. Gerald Osher will be back tomorrow. Um, we, I'm sure he will message me or call me a little bit later on and give me the scoop. If not, hopefully I will be, I will be back and be able to denounce and be a complete train wreck with dolphins. And um, maybe I'll do a SpongeBob oh, or something. I don't know. Instead of the dolphin. Why is my camera so blurry? Oh, it actually doesn't look blurry on the YouTube. It doesn't look like, but anyway, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. I hope y'all enjoyed this show. Get ready for the C shanty. Why is that blowing out? <laughs> oh my gosh, my camera. It's because I did the L, so it went there it goes. Now it goes back in. So ooh. Anyway. <laughs> so stand by for the C shanty that we always do on our uh, our outage. Take care, everyone. Stay well. Stay secure. There once was a kid whose passwords laid across all sites. They were the same, a criminal, then found their fame by taking that data to go. Soon may a criminal come to steal your pictures and data and run. One day when the crime is done, they'll steal your account and go.